Hey guys, it's Miki ASMR here, and today I'm going to be reading a Boku to Kataru X listener. This one is titled Crying, Crushes, Compliments, and Confessions, and this is a chubby listener, but you don't have to be chubby to read this, I mean, or listen to it technically. Um, this is by the same person who wrote the Ushijima fanfic and the uh, Apple Pie Kenma fanfic, so um, make sure you guys go check out their uh, writing because they write really good stuff. And this is my 2,000 subscriber special, if I didn't already say that. Thank you guys so, so much for 2,000 subscribers. It's like, whoa, crazy that 2,000 people are like subscribed to my channel. So thank you for, um, you know, subscribing. And uh, without further ado, let's get right on into the video. You were sitting in class, waiting for the bell for lunch to ring. You just wanted to get out of here, away from all the teasing, away from all the bullying. The bell rang, and you picked up your bag, speeding out of the classroom. You heard snickers from the people in the hallway. I've never seen them run in my entire life. They might actually be trying to lose weight for once. Haha, <laughs> but they'll never be pretty. They eat so much food, that's why they're so fat. They're probably gonna go cry about their stupid crush. I heard that every one of- uh, I heard that they go to every one of Bokuto's volleyball games. Isn't that funny? They probably like him. Too bad he's way too good for them. Your head was down. You didn't want to listen to the gossip anymore. You ran outside towards the gym, the only place where you thought no one would sit and eat lunch. Tears ran down your cheeks, and you didn't want anyone to see you at all. You had finally reached it, crashing into a wall, seeing two familiar faces. One was Boku Takataro, your crush and acquaintance that you had never anticipated to be sitting behind the gym. He was sitting with Akashi Keiji, who was also one of your acquaintances. You had met both of them at volleyballs, or Bokuto's volleyball games. Bokuto's eyes widened in shock, and Akashi gave a slightly worried look as well, being one of the, or being the first one to speak up. L last name, senpai? You heard Akashi say, surprised at your sudden crash into the side of the gym. Last name, why are you crying? What happened? Bokuto inquired, a worried tone in his voice. He sat down, his food, getting up and walking over to you. He froze glancing up at him with a confused expression, tears still running down your face. A blush rose to your face from being around your crush in such a state. I- I'm- I'm not good. You stuttered, sobs choking out of your throat. He cocked his head at you, a puzzled expression plastered over his face. Of course you are, you're definitely good enough. Wait, I didn't say nice, I meant to say good enough, sorry. He- he countered. You looked towards the gym, not knowing what to do. He pulled you into an embrace, making you freeze up. Do you want me to explain more why I think you're good enough? I- I'm- um, I'm just upset because of the comments I get about how I'm fat and ugly and how stupid I am. I know they're true, so I'm just being overdramatic. You degraded yourself, letting another sob choke on his shoulder, wrapping your arms around his torso slightly and returned. Don't listen to them. You're so beautiful, sweet, kind, and you're an honor girl for God's sakes. Weight doesn't matter at all. From what I've seen and how you interact with everyone, you're an amazing person. Pokudo held you tightly, his form giving you comfort. You hesitantly nuzzled your head into his neck, letting your tears run down your face. He grabbed your head gently, comforting you more. Still, it, it hurts a lot. I just want everyone to stop talking. It, it hurts. You cried out into his shoulder. Akashi got up, rubbing your back. You cried into Pokudo's shoulder a little longer before calming down, the tears ceasing to exist. Pokuto felt your breathing come to a more steady pace, pushing your shoulders back gently so he could see your face, wiping the tears away from them. Are you doing better now, Pok- Oh, fuck, I said Pokuto. <laughs> Are you doing better now, last name? Pokuto said, holding you in his arms, or holding you by the arms. You nodded, rubbing your eyes to get your vision back to normal. Th thanks, Pokuto. Akashi-kun, I really needed that. I don't think I've had anyone to talk to if like this in a long time, since I don't really have any friends. He smiled at the two boys, bowing towards them. Bokuto sent a smile back. Well, we're your friends, and you come to all of our games, so of course we're friends, Bokuto exclaimed. And friends sit with each other during lunch, so you're welcome to join us from now on. A smile curved its way onto your lips. You nodded, giving the two boys a closed-eyed smile. That'd be really lovely. Thank you, Bokuto. Can we eat lunch now? I'm sorry for interrupting your eating time. You rubbed the back of your... You rub, eh, you rub the back of your head. It's fine, last name, Senpai. You were having a rough time and you needed support. Akashi reassured, sitting down where his bento was and beginning to eat again. Yeah, you're amazing, last name. Don't forget it. Pokato declared, sitting down next to his food and eating it. You went and sat right down next to him, pulling out your bento. A smile to cover your face as you ate with your new friends. Time skip. Three months later. Hey, 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 last name. How are you doing? 
You heard Bokuto yell in the hallway, bombarding you with a hug. He squealed, and the boy lifted you up while he hugged you. <laughs> Bokuto, I'm doing great, but put me down. You shrieked, a laugh coming out of your mouth, not caring that there were people watching you and the boy swirling you around. It was not normal for the two friends. Akashi just shook his head at Bokuto. Bokuto was greatly helping you improve your confidence, and people were starting to leave you alone, as you were starting to become friends with the crazy third-eared boy. You started watching him at practices, cheering him on as he did awesome spikes. The boy put you down. Now you were starting to think that, eh. Now people were starting to think that the two of you were a couple, even though you were just friends with him. But that didn't stop mutual feelings from developing between you and Bokuto. His heart beating faster when he saw you cheering him on the sidelines with the other managers. The teammates becoming friends with you, you sitting with them during lunch, hanging out, and overall, you were much happier than you were before. Bokuto-san, put them down, you're embarrassing them. Akashi reprimanded, insulting the boy to put you down. Sorry, last name, I just got really excited. I haven't seen you since last Thursday, the boy apologized, dropping the back of his neck. You waved at it, or you waved it off, plastering a grin onto your face. It's not a big deal, Bokuto. Come on, uh, let's go eat lunch, I'm starving. He laughed out, grabbing the boy by the hand and pulling him towards the spot that you usually ate at. First name, you don't need to pull me, I was already going to follow you anyways. Bogota wind out, accidentally calling you by your first name. A small blush rose into your face as you looked away, or you looked away as Akashi followed the two of you, staying out of the conversation. <laughs> Sorry, this is so cute. <laughs> Why is it so cute when he said my first name? Jeez, he muttered, Bokuto not picking up on your blushy demeanor. Cute? Well, I think it's cute when you call me by my name. Eh, shut up, damn it. <sighs> well, if you think it's cute, then I'll call you more often, Bo Bokuto exclaimed, grinning ear to ear. You just blushed, letting out a giggle. The three of you made your way to the usual spot where you ate every day, sitting down and taking out your bentos. So, how was your weekend, Bokuto? You asked, eating some food out of your bento. It was boring without you. Why don't you... Sorry. Why did you have to go on that trip? Bokuto responded, throwing his head back and accidentally hitting the wall behind him. A bonk sound coming from it. Ow, that hurt. You idiot. My god. Akashi commented, face, face palming at his best friend. Oh my god, Bokuto, are you okay? You hardly hurried over to him and waved your hands in worry, grabbing his shoulders and checking out his head. Oh, you, yeah, I'm, I'm fine, first name. This kind of stuff hurts, but I'm just that clumsy. Bokuto- Oops, shit, actually. Oops, sorry. Bokuto replied. I accidentally skipped on that thingy. Oops. Uh, we're gonna that in there. That did not happen. <sighs> Let me just reread that, sorry. Ow. Oh, yeah, I'm fine, first name. It just kind of hurts. I'm kind of clumsy. <laughs> Bokuto replied, rubbing the back of his head to try to soothe the pain. You should really be more careful, Bokuto. You could seriously hurt yourself if you're not careful. You commented gently. The boy gave you a guilty smile, still rubbing the back of his head. I will. You continued eating, listening, listening patiently to the boy ranting about his weekend, nodding when he gave you questions that involved you. You and Akashi started talking too, entering the three of you having a nice conversation. Pokuto eventually got quiet. He kept stealing glances towards you, which was unusual for the lad boy. You finished eating, putting your bento away. Pokuto? You're really quiet, are you okay? You question the boy as he froze up at the sudden question. Um, yeah, um, I was just thinking about something. He looked away, blush forming on his, uh, blush forming on the white and black haired boy. You curiously gazed at him and wondered what he was thinking about, but not pressing on it any further. Book was over his lip, taking a bite of his food. He took one last glance at you, picking up the last of his food. You look really, really pretty with your hair like that. You should wear it like that more often. He flusteredly complimented, shoving the last of, last of his food into your mouth, into his mouth, a blush covering his face, and he looked away. Thank you. Uh, that's really sweet of you, Bokuto. You smiled, taking in a sip of your water bottle, or a sip of your water from your water bottle. I think your hair is super handsome. It looks really good on you. The boy's face lit up. He glanced away, muttering a thank you underneath his breath. Three months later. It was Valentine's Day. You had made chocolates for the gray and white-haired boy. You had told Yuki and Kaori that you had a crush on him, and they urged you to make chocolates for him for Valentine's Day. You followed the words of encouragement, but you were super nervous. You held on tightly onto the straps of your backpack, the chocolate in your bag. You walked down the hallway into your classroom, putting the bag down on the hook, 
Not only were there homemade chocolates inside of the bag, but there was also an in-depth love, love, love letter. You sat through your classes, waiting for the bell for lunch, constantly fidgeting with your fingers. As class continued, your heart sped up faster and faster, until finally the bell rang. You took a deep breath, grabbing your bag and walking out of the classroom. Bogota walked up to you, a large smile on his face, but Akashi was nowhere in sight. Your heart burst when you saw his face, a grin from ear to ear, his eyes glowing in an energetic demeanor. His or your face lit up in a furious blush as you sent a shy wave to the boy, a weak smile on your face. Hey, 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 let's go have lunch top, lunch on the rooftop, just the two of us? Bokado showed his bento and pointed it towards the staircase. With his thumb, you nodded in response, following the boy to the rooftop. You were especially quiet, nerves building up inside. Bokato noticed your tenseness and cocked his head in confusion. Are you okay, first name? You seem nervous. Uh, it's, uh, it's nothing important. You'll, um, uh, you'll find out later, you muttered, a blush becoming more prominent on your face. Bokato noticed the redness, but didn't say anything about it. He figured that you were going to confess to someone today, and it did make him sad. He liked you and he was planning on asking you on a date. The two of you made your way up onto the rooftop, sitting down on the bench that was up there. Bokoto unzipped, or unzipped, opened his bento and fidgeted, or you fidgeted with your bag, zipping and unzipping the zipper. He gave you a worried look, placing a hand on your arm to calm you down, which made you do the exact opposite. You froze, blush intensifying, which made the boy question why you were blushing so much. Hey, it's okay, you don't need to be so tense, first name. I know you're probably gonna confess to someone today. I know you can do it, he quietly comforted. Your body relaxed slightly, a sweat drop ran down your cheek, glancing at the boy's lap nervously. Y yeah, um, I, I know. You shut your eyes tightly, turning away from the boy, unzipping your bag and dig digging through it. He assumed that you were grabbing your bento, so he returned to eating. He was surprised when you got up, standing in front of him, stretching your arms as far as they could go, offering a box of chocolates and a love letter to him. Pukato's mouth was left slightly open. Your head was turned away in embarrassment, eyes shut firmly. I, um, I, I love you, Bogato. You confessed quietly. Your eyes were still shut as you awaited a response. He momentarily was stunned, before his immediate reaction was to jump on you, pulling you into an embrace as you felt tears that threatened to fall out of your eyes, begin to stream down your face. Oh, thank God, first name. I thought you were going to tell someone else that you liked them, he said in relief, clutching you tightly and nuzzling his head into your chest. You embraced him back tightly too, laughing by his head. Who else would I like? You laughed out, tears still streaming down your face. He smiled into your chest, realizing that there was no one else that really made you blush like he did. He looked at his head, looking at your face. No one, I guess? I, I love you too, first name. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Pokuto shouted, gaining the attention of everybody on the rooftop, which made you blush in embarrassment, more than you already were. Uh, thank you. You thanked, tightly holding him back as much as you could with the chocolate still in your hand. The two of you stayed in embrace before breaking away slowly. Let's eat our lunch now, Pokuto suggested, grabbing your hand, but the chocolates were in the way, so you awkwardly sh shifted them to the other hand. Pokuto gently took your hand in his. The warmth was nice on your skin. It was a relatively warm winter that year, so eating on the rooftop wasn't a problem. You felt the blush on your face intensify. Who knew that holding hands would be such a nerve-wracking experience? You dug out your bento from your bag, opening it as much as you could with one hand. You handed the chocolates to the intended receiver, who put them in his bag. You reluctantly removed your hand from the other boys, Bogota already missing the warmth of your soft hands. You ate for a while, the Valentine's Day themed bento catching the attention of your partner sitting next to you. He clutched, he snuck his chopstick over to your bento and stole a piece of the heart-shaped onigiri and he ate it before you could stop him, resulting in you smacking him lightly on the head. Pokoto, don't steal my food. If you do, I'll steal something from you, you reprimanded, which made him sassily snap back. Oh yeah? And what are you gonna steal, my foot? You took his tie and pulled him in into a kiss. The boy was definitely surprised by the sudden action, but he melted into it, softly and gently kissing you back, holding you by the face. His lips had a slight taste of the onigiri that he had just stolen from you, you licked his lips, stealing back the taste of the onigiri. You eventually pulled away first, letting go and wiping your lips on your sleeve, cheeky grin covering them, seeing the boy in the day state. That's what I'm gonna steal, dumbass. 
you insulted, continuing to eat your pinto like nothing had happened. His face was in the light tinge of red, but he returned, or he turned away, continuing to eat his pinto. I guess I have to steal your food more often, he murmured, picking up your attention. Next time, I won't give you any kisses for the rest of the day, you said plainly. The boy gave a sad expression before suddenly perking up, which made you giggle at the sight. Wait, wait, sorry. <laughs> Wait, I get more kisses tomorrow too? He excitedly questioned, which you nodded in a response with a cheeky smile on your face. Of course, Kataro, you are my boyfriend after all, he said, finishing your last bento. The boy became very flustered and very excited. We're dating? He inquired, the largest grin that you had ever seen planted on his face. You nodded, putting away your bento and zipping it up inside of your bag. The boy took your hand as you stood up, the bell ringing, indicating that classes were over soon. Or classes were beginning soon. He walked you to class, your heart skipping beats on the regular as people saw you holding hands with him. He saw Akashi, Yuki, and Kaori, who were all waiting by your classroom, seeing if their plan had worked to get you confessing to him while you were alone. When they saw the two of you holding hands, they high fived each other. Kaori trotted over to you, an excited expression on her face. You did it! I'm so proud of your last name. Kaori congratulated the two of you. Bokuto holding up your hands as they were interlocked. Yup, they're so totally awesome. I just had to make a mine. Bokuto proudly exclaimed, extorting a giggle from your body. I was the one who asked you out, dork. You playfully said as you pushed his arm. He gave you a nervous smile before you came up closer to him, planting a kiss on his cheek. I'll see you later, Kotaro. See you later, first name. He let go of your hand, letting you go to class and heading into his own class. Akashi, Kaori, and Yuki were also doing the same. He went to class, happy as he could ever be, as you sat in your class, embarrassment finally catching up to you as he covered your burning red crimson cheeks with your hands. Oh my god, that was so cute, that was so cute, oh my god, literally what? Bro, stop it. That was the cutest shit in the world. That was so cute. That was adorable. That was perfect, that was mwah, immaculate, that was very nice. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed because I definitely enjoyed that one. That was so cute. Oh my god. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can notify every single time I post a video. And also like the video because that is something for the YouTube, the YouTube algorithm. And also, y'all go check out their fanfic right now. Mm -hmm. Go do it because they need more reads on this. Why is it not enough? They only have 73 reads. Why are you guys not reading it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go do that right now. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.